Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video I'm going to go through recess incompatibility because it's a bit of a tricky subject to get your head around but once you get your head around it, it's really quite simple. So to start with, it's important to realise that the mum and the baby have quite different blood types. The baby has its own unique blood type because it inherits half of its genetic makeup from its father. The mum and the baby's blood don't actually mix, but they come in very close contact with each other across the placental membrane. When somebody talks about their blood group, they might say they're A positive or B positive or O negative. The first letter is their blood type, and the second character, the positive or negative, is their recess status. And if somebody's recess positive, it means that their red blood cells have the recess antigen on them. If somebody's recess negative, let's say O negative, it means that their red blood cells don't have that recess antigen on them. So why is this important in pregnancy? It's important because of one scenario, and that's where the mum is recess negative and the baby is rhesus positive. To understand why this is important, we need to look at what happens when you have the rhesus antigen. If you have the rhesus antigen on your red blood cells, your body learns to recognize that antigen as being part of your body, so it doesn't attack it. But when you don't have the rhesus antigen on your red blood cells, and you come in contact with that antigen, your body thinks that that is a pathogen and it needs to attack it. Let's say you were transfused with blood that contained the rhesus antigen and your body didn't have the rhesus antigen, then your B cells of your immune system would recognize that this is something that doesn't belong to your body and it would launch an immune response and create something called antibodies against that rhesus antigen and we call these anti-D antibodies. So why is this important in pregnancy? Well, if the mum is rhesus positive, we've got nothing to worry about because that baby can be rhesus negative or rhesus positive and she's never going to try and attack that baby's blood cells. But if that mum is rhesus negative, meaning that she doesn't have the antigen on her red blood cells and the baby is rhesus positive, meaning that he or she does have the rhesus antigen on their red blood cells, it means that any time that baby's blood gets into the mother's bloodstream, she's going to create the anti-rhesus antibodies. So how does the baby's blood get into the mother's bloodstream? This can happen at any what we call sensitizing events. So this could be a miscarriage after 12 weeks, abdominal trauma where there's been some bleeding inside the placenta and some blood cells have got across or it could be at birth when there's obviously lots of bleeding and lots of mixing of mum and baby's blood. Usually this doesn't have much of an impact at the time because the mum will just destroy the blood cells that have got into her system but in future pregnancies what happens is those antibodies that the mum has developed will be able to cross the placental barrier because they're only very small proteins and they'll get into the bloodstream of the baby and start attacking the baby's blood cells. As the baby's blood cells are hemolyzed or destroyed, that releases chemicals into the baby's body, particularly something called bilirubin. And bilirubin is responsible for creating jaundice. A slight jaundice in babies is normal, that's called a physiological jaundice. When the bilirubin level gets very high, it can cause significant brain damage and actually long-term learning difficulties and disabilities. This process of antibodies crossing across the placenta into the baby's bloodstream and calling, causing a hemolytic anemia and a severe jaundice is called hemolytic disease of the newborn, or HDN. So the question is, how do we prevent this situation of the mum becoming sensitized? Well, we use something called anti-D immunoglobulins. And what these are is are basically the anti-D antibodies, and we give them by an intramuscular injection 
at any event where the mum might become sensitised. So any time the baby's blood might have got into the mum's bloodstream. And what this injection does is it circulates around the blood and destroys any of the baby's blood or any of the blood cells in the mum that contain this recess antigen. And by destroying all of the baby's blood cells before the mum has an opportunity to launch an immune response, you prevent the mum becoming sensitised and developing her own antibodies against the rhesus antigen. So what we do is in every new mum, every pregnant lady, we check their rhesus status. And if they're rhesus positive, we don't have to worry about rhesus incompatibility at all. She won't have any problems related to her rhesus group. But if the mum is rhesus negative, we have to assume that the baby is rhesus positive. And so what we do is we give her an anti-D immunoglobulin intramuscular injection any time she might be sensitised to the baby's blood. So this would be things like late miscarriages after 12 weeks, abdominal trauma, or any bleeding during the pregnancy. We also give anti-D injections to mums at 28 weeks of gestation, and then we check at birth the baby's blood group by taking a sample of the baby's blood from its umbilical cord, and we give the mums an anti-D injection if it turns out the babies are rhesus positive. If the babies at birth are rhesus negative, mums don't need an injection. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.